Hey everyone, let's take a look at conditional rendering in React. So we're using the new Better Docs, uh, which is better.reactjs.org. And we're under the Learn section, describing the UI conditional rendering. So a couple of ways to do conditional rendering in React. You can use if statements, you can use the and operator, or you can use the tenary operator. So let's take a look at all of these. Um, so if you had a list, for example, and you wanted to render like, you know, a tick uh, anytime that something has been done in a to-do list, for example, let's have a look at how we would do this. So we want to add a tick in here and we can basically say, is packed is true, then render that tick. So we've got if is packed, return this or else return that, right? That's one way of doing it. Um, and as you can see, this works, you know, perfectly well. Um, and then another way is conditional returning nothing with null. So you can say if is packed, return nothing or return um, li class name item name. Um, if is packed is true, the component will return nothing. So here we're only showing what hasn't been done, right? Your to-do list. And this is um, the rest of being done. This pick is packed is true. So we're like, if it's true, I don't want to show it because I don't need to do it, right? Um, or else show what hasn't been done. So if we set this to false, for example, uh, LSE, then we would have two things on our list, okay? So that's another way of doing it. Um, in practice, returning null from a component isn't common because it might surprise a developer trying to render it. So just be careful with that. Uh, conditionally, including JSX. So um, here we can have our li class name item with our name and our tick, uh, which is very similar to this, right? It's very similar to the one without the tick. So basically we can say, if it's packed, return this, else return this, and we're kind of like, you know, duplicating a lot of code here because the class name is duplicated. If we want to change the class name, we got to change it in both places. And um, it's only small right now, but it, you know, it could get worse. So that's a good time to use the tenary operator, which is the question mark and the um, colon. So how does that work exactly? So instead of having this code, you would write it instead like this. So you've got only one li to maintain, only one class name item to maintain. And then you basically put this, remember, enter JavaScript land, and then say is packed. So if is packed is equal to true, this is like, you know, question mark, is packed true, then I want you to do this. That's name plus the tick. And this is like an else, right? Else, give me the name, just the name, no tick, right? So if is packed is true, name plus tick, else, just the name. Okay, so, uh, let's say you want to wrap the completed items text into another HTML tag, like a Dell tag for like striking true. How would you do that? So again, the same way, we're basically just saying, uh, again, we open up our curly brackets. We say, is packed as true? And then we just put a bracket here, right? Uh, we say uh, HTML element Dell, and then our JavaScript land name plus tick. Um, again, the curly or the normal brackets and then add the name in for the else part of this tenary operator. And there you have it. Okay, let's have a look. The logical and operator. So the two ampersands. Um, so basically you can also use those and say name. And then this is kind of like um, is packed is true. It's kind of confusing because I always used to think if it says is packed and it has a tick, right? But it's no, if it's packed is true, then it's kind of like a then, then do this, then render this. So if this is true, then render this. Um, okay, so that you can see it here. And that's kind of like, you know, cleaner as well and quite nice and quite easy to follow. So that's, that's another way of doing it, which is cool. Um, so yes, um, with this expression, remember that if anything on the left is true, then basically what's on the right is gonna get rendered. So uh, be careful with zero values because zero is still true. So if you have something that like is numerical, make sure you're doing greater than and not getting the zero because um, otherwise you run into issues. So just be careful of that. Conditionally assigning JSX to a variable. So yeah, you can just use the let, let item content equals name and then use an if statement to reassign the JS expression. So if is packed, then item content is the name plus the tick. So, and then you can just render the item content in the list. Um, that's another way of, of doing it, uh, which will look something like this. Let item content, if it's packed, um, render this, and then like item content, yeah? So you render name or name plus tick, depending on 
if it's as packed or not. Okay, cool. Um, and then the same if you're going to put the um, the HTML tag in. So just open these these uh, braces here, uh, brackets, and then put everything else inside. Other than that, that works the same. Cool. So a recap. Um, yeah, basically you can use the if statements, you can use the conditional tenary, uh, you can use the and, uh, the logical and operator, or you can just use like if. So, you know, up to you which one you use. Um, let's try some challenges and see if we understood everything that we've just done. Okay, so no pressure. Let's have a look. Challenge one, use the conditional operator. Um, so the tenary operator, conditional operator, this is the and, and, or uh, colon to render this um, x. I'm going to copy the x. Um, so if is packed isn't true. So we've got a list item here. We want to say name is packed. And here we're saying is packed, uh, render the tick. But we want to change that to the tenary operator. So I'm going to put a question mark. So if is packed uh, is true, render the tick. Uh, else, this is like my else, um, render the x. And let's have a look down here at our list. And da da! Challenge one and number one completed. Okay, um, let's go on to challenge number two. Okay, this is a bit longer. Uh, each item receives a numerical importance prop and use the end operator uh, to render importance x in italics, but only for items that have a non-zero importance. So your item list should end up looking like this, right? Let's have a look. Here's our list here. Um, we want it to show uh, this importance here. So basically, uh, we want to use the and operator. So we want to have something and do this, right? So what do we want to say? We want to say importance. So I'm going to uh, open my curly braces. I'm going to say uh, importance, which is passed in here as a prop, as you can see here. So I want to say, I want, if you are greater than zero, uh, then I want you to do this. Let me see. And it's like then. I want you to do this. So what do we want you to do? Uh, we can just put, let's just do hello. Just see, make sure we're doing it. Okay, so we got our hello, right? So that's cool. That's excellent. And it is working as we expect it. And now we just want to put in um, this, but the number to be the actual importance. So uh, let's open our, do we need curly braces here? I'm not even sure. I can't remember now. Let's Let's try it out. And we want to put in, it's in italics, so we want to put in an italic and close the italic and then just paste this in here. This is not dynamic, so um, okay, we've got nine and then we just need to change that nine to be importance, right? Now this is going to print out the word importance because, let's have a look, because um, I haven't opened the window to JavaScript. So open the window to JavaScript and say, JavaScript, I want you, not a string. And there we've got it, right? Space suit, importance nine, uh, nothing because this is uh, less than zero and importance six for photo of time. Excellent. Uh, challenge number three, where are you? Here. Okay, excellent. Uh, refactor series of tenary to if and variables. Okay, so the drink component uses a series of tenary operators. You can see it here. And we're kind of like, there's a lot of rep Repetition, right? Name equals T, name equals T, name equals T. So how can we uh, improve this? So uh, we want to use um, the if statement. So this needs to go before the return. And we can say let um, part. Um, and we can, I'm going to do it a different way. You can do it um, whichever way you want. But we can say like directly just let part equal leaf. Otherwise, we could just say like let part equals and um, then, you know, do it different, but let's just do it really quickly like this. Let caffeine equals, and I'm taking the T variables, so as you can see, which is the first one, okay? And then I can say let uh, age equals, and I'm taking this value here, okay? And then I can just literally say if uh, name is not equal to T, then I want you to say, and I'm just going to copy this, right? And I'm going to put it here. Now you could say name equals T and then if name else name equals coffee and you could do it that way. Um, both are fine. So I'm just keep taking the bean. I'm changing this to, from a leaf to a bean, uh, changing this to this. And then I'm changing the uh, age. We put this here. 
And now um, that's all kind of like, oh, I need, sorry, I need to remove my lets, otherwise that'll be an issue, of course. Um, so there we go. Lovely. So yeah, this is my age. And again, like I said, I could have done if name equals T and just let part equals or no, no equals, let part. And then like, you know, duplicate this. I've name equals else if, etc. And then here, I just need to put um, in their curly brackets. I need to remove all this and I want to put the part. And then in here, I want to put caffeine. And in here, I want to put H. And if we have a look, we have our tea, we have our coffee plant, and it's all looking good. So don't forget, uh, the solutions are always down here, so you can always do these challenges yourself. If you get stuck, uh, check out the solutions. I hope you had fun, and what's next? Rendering lists is in the next uh, session. See you then. Bye.